You're watching 8 News Now at 5 with Paula Francis and Dave Cavassier. The news for Southern Nevada is now. Anyone who ever struggled to put together one of those model <laughs> airplanes as a kid might really relate to the story. Yeah, it's about time some grown-up kids who only got time making good living by gluing together highly detailed models but are also helping to clear the way for humans to start living in outer space. It's part of a one-of-a-kind private space race that's underway right here in George Knapp. The I-Team got an exclusive sneak peek inside. You know, the feeling we got from talking to these model makers is sort of like inside at Bigelow Aerospace, that is, is that maybe we should just keep quiet about the whole thing and not draw attention to the fact that they get paid to do this kind of work. Some of them still can't believe it. This isn't the first time some of these guys have glued together realistic models of spaceships and futuristic craft. Their special effects work were the highlights in several blockbuster movies. What they're doing now, though, is not sci-fi by any means. It's the real deal. The evil alien spaceships in Independence Day were models, of course, as were the underwater craft in the abyss and the ships of the Pirates of the Caribbean. There's a local connection to these and other movies, the model factory inside Bigelow Aerospace. It's like a workshop for space age elves, artists who gave shape to those dozens of Hollywood hits, but whose models also first envisioned the most extravagant resorts on the Las Vegas Strip. The model makers that we have here come from the film industry, they come from the architecture industry, they come from painting and scenic background, uh, set making. You like know, most of his colleagues, great, uh, Sean Buckley worked on model kits as a kid. He and his team of eight still use glue and paint and imagination to create futuristic whiz-bang machines. But some days, they just have to pinch themselves. Having a job where you get to sit and build models all day long, and it's extremely creative, and there's a lot of cool designs, for a lot of these guys, it's just a dream come true. And this one is designed to accommodate three people. Bigelow Aerospace is the only company in the world which is building space habitats, inflatable modules that one day soon could be attached to the ISS to provide more space in space. Inside the North Las Vegas plant are detailed models of the three main designs the company will begin producing in the near future and more ambitious longer term plans such as bases on the moon. This is 1320 cubic meters in volume. It isn't practical for company founder station, Bob Bigelow to send volume, out life-size uh, versions of his spacecraft to, to potential to customers space so his in-house model factory space cranks space out space scaled space down space versions space that are a key part of the company's marketing effort far more memorable than, say, a business card. They're a lot better than PowerPoint presentations. When, you, when people can see something three-dimensionally and see how it is put together, and then we have the relative size of it by having a little astronaut guy here outside, you know, so they can say, oh, yeah, these are pretty large, aren't they? You know, this is a 30th scale. Individual spacecraft models range from a few inches long to more than 10 feet high. They're sent to potential customers, including governments and corporations, as a reminder of the possibility abilities. At the heart of the model factory is a laser contraption. Anything that can be designed in a computer can be cut and shaped to the desired scale with incredible precision. If you imagine it's the same thing if you take and send a, a picture over to your printer, it prints it out. Basically you print it out on plastic. What this does, it allows us to create products on the fly. After the laser does its thing, the model makers take over. Drawings become molds, molds become pieces, pieces become models that are painstakingly sanded, glued, and assembled. As many as 300 pieces per model then are painted in excruciating detail. No, we'll paint small faces on people, we paint small dials all the way down to 10 thousandths of an inch. It's pretty obvious guy. where some of the artists got their inspiration. But I was uh, 14 years old when the movie Star Wars came out and it made a big impression on me. Bruce, the mold maker, is in charge of the astronaut corps. The heads are different angles, so I can plug them in and make different poses. And I have sets of arms. This is a tree of arms. And these can be then used to make all the figures look individualistic and not just like the same cookie-cutter guy constantly. Toy-sized astronauts are more than window dressing. They've directly contributed to the design of the actual spacecraft. Spatial awareness, knowing that is this crew quarters big enough? Well, you can tell. You're going to put a human figure inside there. You're going to have them doing different tasks, performing different things. It gives you a size and spatial relationship. Vitally important as we're designing this. Building model spaceships for a living is a lot of fun. Building models that could shape the first private habitats in space is even more fulfilling. Orville and Wilbur's bike shop. 
You know, when they're coming up with you know, the airplane to think about what they're gonna do, how they're gonna make it, what they're gonna do with it. Here we are. I mean, who else is building space habitats? You know, who else out there is doing it? It could change the way that we view living up in space. Bigelow Aerospace expects to add more than a thousand jobs over the next three years once it finishes construction on a massive new annex. And there may be spots open for recruits from local set designers and artists. We have other stories that we've done on this company and more information on 8newsnow.com. What a great job. Very right? forward thinking. We'll have to take a tour of that place. I'd love to. <laughs> uh, that is so hot. Thanks, George.